Tell the pretty people about yourself. Oh, um, well, pretty people. I am uh, Doug Walker. I have a website called thatguyoftheglasses.com, and I do uh, a bunch of reviews and a bunch of characters and comedy. Uh, we best known as a nostalgia critic, but I also do shows like Bum Reviews and Video Game Confessions and Ask That Guy With the Glasses. And uh, we also have a bunch of producers that do a whole bunch of other reviews and sketches and so forth, and uh, we have them make material on the site. And uh, I've just been making an ass of myself for about seven years. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The floor is open for questions. Right there. Hi, I'm Sarah from Oldtowl.com. Um, and I was wondering if there's ever any new things on the Critics there? Has there ever been any episodes that's been particularly difficult to film for production reasons or uh, just general mayhem happening about this time? Uh, the Nostalgia Critics, I mean, recently a lot more effort's been put into them because I have two weeks on them now, so I can sort of expand and have more effects and creative ideas. But in terms of, um, in terms of difficulty, not too bad. I mean, there's definitely been late nights, but I, I kind of got a lot of energies, and a lot of the actors we work with have a lot of energies, so it's not that bad. Uh, the anniversaries were much tougher, like the Kick-Assia Suburban Nights mm -hmm. and uh, Holy Flea. Um, because there's like, I think the most I work with actors, like the number is like maybe five in a room or something like that. With those, it's like over 20 every day. And uh, it, it's tough when you try to, you, you're trying to keep everybody happy, but you gotta shoot a movie too. And it's, it's, it's very difficult and it definitely, it kind of kicked everybody's asses, including myself. But it, uh, I, I think it turned out some really cool products. Oh, I, choose you. I, I don't know how this I works. I choose you. Go right ahead. <laughs> you choose me. I choose you. <laughs> Hi, Quella from the Magic Fan. Um, I was wondering, do you, since I imagine, like, in the, like when you first started, that either you and you and someone else did all the work, but since you have more people on board this now, do you you still do like the editing portions, or do you does someone else handle that? Uh, for the Nostalgia Critic, it, it's still me doing all the editing. The writing had, very early on, my first start was myself, and then um, my brother started to get into the writing process, and finally it's like, oh, why don't you just be another writer? You know, you're, you're really funny and good at this. Uh, and unless it's a crossover, yeah, it's always kind of been the two of us. Uh, the only other thing we've really added is more actors, because I think there's only, as handsome as it is, there's only so long you can look at this face. Uh, you know, there's only so long I can, you know, play a bearded woman and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, uh, so I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get a little bit more diversity in here. Um, but yeah, it, it's still mainly us because that seems to be what works best. The only other major change, like I said, is that we allow more time. Uh, and even if, like before, even if the productions weren't always that big, it's like I need at least one more day to write. Because uh, I found that really did make a difference. Because if, if there's a joke that's just not funny enough before, I just had to be like, well, I just have to go with the one that goes in my head, deadline, and uh, just throw it in there. But now it's like I can, you know, take a while, get up, walk around, maybe jog or something, and then just like, you know, I got it, and run back and put the joke down. Um, so, yeah, it, it still kept pretty small, but because there's more time, I think we can definitely expand on what we can do with them. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Hi, um, DJ Keiko from Cosplay NYC. My question is, how does it feel to see people cosplaying as nostalgic at cons that you go to? It, it's surreal because the, the weirdest thing is that, okay, the NC outfit is not that hard. To, <laughs> to, you find a, a suit coat, a red tie, and a white shirt and a hat. It's like, not too difficult. It's strange, like, when I was putting the bum character together, I was just sort of looking around the house. I had this old trench coat that my grandfather had and, like, this black wig and like oh here's this bear's head okay i guess that'll do and now like when people want to cosplay it's like they try really hard to find the exact same clothing like i hope this is the right color i hope this is the right hat and it's like it was just stuff i happened to have lying around you know there was like so little thought put into it it's just so funny to see people now try to replicate that as hard as possible um you know same thing with ask that guy that was just a friend's robe and now people are trying to find the exact same color robe um so yeah it's <clears throat> It's a little surreal, but it's still so flattering. I mean, it's just so cool to think like, you know, oh, wow, like I'm one of the people they try to dress up as, you know, that you see at conventions. And that is one of the reasons I knew I needed kind of an outfit going in, because I knew that's a very important part of the identity. Uh, I'm definitely one of those people where I think it's important if you see the silhouette of someone or a character, you can tell who it is right away. And so I, I think that was always sort of a, 
what I was looking for with the NC, that you know, when you see the hat, the coat, the ties, that you, you would just get who it is immediately. Uh, so, but no, it's really cool, it's really flattering. Uh, yeah. Joshua Altobelli from WCCA TV. Um, I know in the Christmas episode you had your, well, one of the Christmas episodes, you had your parents in your video. And I know that you've announced that you have, uh, you got married like two years ago or something yeah. like that. Um, has your wife ever been in any of your videos? Or? She's done a voice. Once in a while, we both know it's probably not best for her to do this kind of stuff because uh, she's a social worker, and oh. it's not always best to have like, you know, oh, wait a minute, you're on the stuff. When you have a show that reaches thousands of people, and <laughs> you know, so, but at the same time, once in a while, she'll get in a mood where she's suddenly like Lucille Ball, like, I want to be in the show, you know, kind of that thing. So she'll do, she, she's done two voices. She's done, um, in one of the, uh, there's, I think I did only three episodes of this. It's called like the cartoon show, and she did a voice on there. I think she was Paul Abdul. And then in um, in the ass that guy where he marries the GPS, she's the voice of the GPS. So oh so, so that she is in uh, two of them, and I think in To Boldly Flee, she's also uh, when Nell and Lee says the scientist. Uh, one is supposed to slap me, but we didn't get a good shot of it, so then she had to slap me in that shot. So she liked doing that. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Fred Ackman, DW Media Spotlight. But I also moved to a YouTube site called Reviewers Unknown. It's one of the, um, so it's not only has have you inspired other interviewers, but your site has inspired other websites. Cool. I know even Lindsay Ellis has started her own site recently. Yeah. Popular. What do you think about uh, the fact that the site has inspired other sites, other reviewer collectors? Oh, it, it's cool. I mean, and that. That stuff is definitely a result of the uh, Mike Machat, the CEO of Channel Awesome, because I, I have no business mind, like, at all. I, I'm, I'm good at making videos, I'm good at ideas and being creative with, like, uh, you know, in front of a camera and stories and characters. That, but I, I have no business mind at all. So that was it. It, the whole thing really was his idea to, like, to make it a site to get other producers involved, to bring them in and sort of make this community. Uh, because my business might is so bad, it wouldn't even think to go there. I mean, I, I'd probably just still be on YouTube, still trying to figure out how to make money on this at all. But he, he put the business plan together. So it's it's great. It's great that not only could I, has he found a way to have me do this for a living, uh, but to also allow other people to come on in and be a part of it and inspire others. So no, it, it's the coolest thing. I mean, this all just started as a hobby. So it's so awesome that other people are like, hey, I want to do something very, very similar. So it, I love it. Hi, uh, Devin Kobeck from AntiFanboy.com. Uh, obviously, uh, nostalgia critic reviews kind of movies from your childhood, um, but you know, there's only so many movies. So, I, you know, and as a result, you've obviously had to kind of maybe go further and further, like on the timeline. But are there any kind of like movies? Like, do you have some sort of system where, like, I, I can't do anything? You know. 04 and beyond or anything like that in terms of like what movies you know the NC would kind of review or critique? Uh, there's very few limitations now. It, it is nice that we've opened it up. Um, and, and honestly a lot of the newer stuff I have review has still had some tie to nostalgia like Man of Steel and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know it, it's still something connecting to um, you know what we grew up with. But uh, no there's just this um, there's just a sense of, like you said, you're, you're going to run out of nostalgia eventually. I think people are going to kind of get bored, but we do want to keep going back to it as well. So I think what we try to do is we try to do something new and then something old. And it's sort of the same with the style. Like we'll do something that's really big and grand and has a story, and then we'll do one that's kind of more traditional where it's more talking. It's just me in front of the wall and such. Uh, and the newer, <clears throat> the newer stuff does the best. I mean, that's the one that has, like, on YouTube, it has, like, a, over a million views and stuff. We got a couple of those. Um, but I think it's still good to balance it out, you know, have something that's a little bit more traditional and low-key, because I think if you make them all really big and really grand, it, they won't be that anymore. You'll just kind of get tired of them. So I think it's good to kind of balance it out. Um, but, yeah, in terms of, like, a cutoff date, we kind of just said, Screw it, we'll do whatever. Um, genres we've gotten, uh, 
we, we cracked down a touch on. I think when I did the cell, you know, people liked it, but they were kind of like, okay, let's let's not see any more like that, though, mm -hmm. you know, because it was just so gritty and so intense, and they're like, oh, why don't you let Brad Jones handle that, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, e exploitative stuff like that, you know, or, or sort of shock values, that even if it's bad, it's sort of like we should probably stay a little bit away from because it's, we know we want people to come here and have fun and be kind of lighthearted, um, where, yeah, where someone like uh, uh, Cinema Snob or, or Phelous or something can look at that stuff and it's like, that's kind of why you're here. You're here to see these really dark, gritty things that really fail and be made fun of them to sort of suck out that, you know, nastiness that's trying to shove on you. Um, but yeah, that's kind of their shtick and you're used to it. And I think with mine, we don't do it as much. So we stay a little far away from that. But if there's one that's just so stupid that we can get a lot of material on it, we'll probably still do it. We have time for uh, one more question, sorry. Uh, and what I did not get. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know that you stopped uh, doing the anniversary videos because they've gotten really, really big. So many producers on the site now. And then we're going on to more like anthology uh, collaboration big projects. Um, so is there, are you guys working on one now for this year? And do you plan maybe on doing an anniversary, one like you used to make for like the big 10 year anniversary? The, this year we're definitely not doing one because we're trying to get our shows off the ground. We've had a lot of delays and such. Um, and on top of that, nostalgia critics do take longer and there is more effort that goes into them. Um, so we kind of figure, all right, so that's, we're getting kind of these bigger productions to people, so you know, it's not that bad. Uh, we'll definitely do another one uh, at some point, because there definitely are ideas that like have kind of been popping up uh, in our head, but it's, you know, after the last five, I mean, they just got bigger and bigger and harder and harder, we do sort of go, Okay, if we know going in that this is probably going to be kind of a disaster, it's like, let's not do it, you know? <laughs> uh, so I'd much rather wait until we get sort of like the other shows going and we have a little bit more of a, a rhythm and, and a solid idea we know we want to do. I think we just definitely need a break this year. Um, my guess would be there'll be one next year. I mean, I don't think we have to wait for the 10. Um, but I said, don't... No promises on that, but mm -hmm. it's, chances are there will probably be one starting, if not next year, certainly the year after that. Awesome. Everyone, Doug Walker. Thank you. But pretty much in reality with movies, movies is 
not a science, it's not a mathematics, it doesn't work like that. It's very much, uh, you know, it's opinion, it's what you like, it's what you dislike, and you wonder, well, wait, why do... But, but uh, according to the chart, it's a mathematical... <laughs> say, you know, you are wrong about that movie, there really is no wrong. If you flip a coin and it comes up heads, that's when it's right or right. But it came up heads. No, it came up tails. No, it quite clearly came up heads. With a movie, you know, a lot of people say Susan King is the greatest movie of all time. Somebody says, that movie is awful and you're wrong. It's like, look, a lot of people we say... We all know it's chairman of the board with Karen Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that? like and everyone else hates, or something that you hate and everybody else likes. You know, Roger Ebert liked all sorts of movies that a lot of people just like. The what? Phantom Menace. <laughs> he gave them more stars than the other two Star Wars prequels. He liked my stuff. That's how messed up he was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, pretty much, yeah, so the idea is that with films, like any form of art, is that rather than saying, you're wrong, Take that, shove it in your face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, listen Well, okay, I'll be kids. But <laughs> pretty much is that we try, what, what movies can do if, if you talk about them right is that rather than forcing your opinion, you share it. And rather than getting ready to contradict and prove your point, you listen to what the person has to say. And I found that you've actually been on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it works. Is this why this is needed? <laughs> because of that, when you talk with people and you listen and you share opinions and you listen to uh, their opinions, you find out more about that person. Like someone can come up and admit, like, they're like, well, maybe you hate, but maybe it was a film that they grew up with or they watched with their mother or something like that. They have a nice memory or a connection with it or maybe it's something that they just connect to something they grew up with or just a, a whole, there's a whole bunch of reasons you can like a movie and it's very hard to say, you're wrong! No, go ahead and like it. You can go ahead and enjoy it, you can go ahead and hate it, you can think whatever you want. Um, and with that said, uh, every time we do this panel, we always start with a movie that everyone disagrees with us on. Like, you know, we talk about it, and we just go, you know, holy smokes, I nobody agreed with me on this one, very few did. Um, and you go first, because eventually you have trouble thinking about you first. Uh, <laughs> on the spot. You, you go first. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, if you need a second, I can give you one. Uh, yeah, I need a second. I have to give you one. This is my stock answer, and uh, just because Brad Jones, uh, he and I were talking at the convention last week, and uh, we both love Batman Returns. It's my favorite Batman. I'm sorry. I just got out of the uh, voice actors panel when Rob Paulson and Maurice Lamarge were like, that would be stock. And they were totally making fun of when I was in the back. I was like, I don't care how many enemies you have, Maurice. It's like, shut up. <laughs> Um, actually, I got one um, uh, that I feel like everyone seems to hate. And you know, taking all the politics of the author and stuff like that, I really like the movie Enders, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, and, and most people are like, you know, like they either hate it or they're like, eh, whatever. I was in the end category. Oh, yeah, it's I, I think for me, because there's so many, you know, you are the chosen one, you will lead the way stories with like little kids and stuff, where it's like, okay, I've seen this a million times. But with that one, I felt it really juggled this kid trying to hold, trying to figure out what part of his humanity does he hold on to, and what part does he let go and sort of kill to lead these people and, and, and to save the day. And at least this one didn't have to pot race. <laughs> <laughs> that, to me, that's always something that's like you can see a kid going, I don't know, I don't know, like Harry Potter, but you never hear what is he giving up, what is he sacrificing, what is he holding on to, what's important. It's always, I mean, to him just sort of going like, I don't know, I'm just all oh, angsty and I hate stuff. You know, for, I really thought this kid had to grow up real fast. He did grow up really fast. He had to answer these really tough questions. And I just really, really dug it. Uh, but I'm very much in a minority. I mean, there's a lot of people that, I know there's politics about the authors, like a big and jerk and stuff like that. That's not cool. Uh, but yeah, I really dug the movie and I'm just, I wanted a view on that. But again, there's no right or wrong answer. I didn't hate The Amazing Spider-Man. 
I know so many people that are, you know, or the Star Trek the, the first one. I hated it in the darkness, but both of those. Yeah, the last few minutes. But yeah, but both of those, I'm like, everybody hates those films. They're just like, oh my god, it's so terrible. I was like, it was fine. So, so yeah, as you see, even though it's like, we talk about films really, like every critic, I mean, the best known critics, the ones that won awards and stuff like that, all of them have movies that everybody would do a double take and be like, what? You like that? Or you didn't like that? And everyone's going to have that kind of movie. So right now we're going to open up, we have a mic right here, and we're going to open it up to you guys. And you're just going to come up and you're just going to talk about what movies you like, everyone hates, or what movie you hate and everybody else likes. And you're going to explain why, and we're just going to talk about it. And if we don't like the movie, we've got a trap door right there in front of us. <laughs> We have a buddy right here, his spinners. <laughs> so, yeah, got, you, you can just go ahead and line up whoever wants you. We got the mic right there. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, start here. So, there we go. Yes, that to the small tap. Yeah, 
Ich bin